Hello, my name's Phil Earl. Um, I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, I would record you just a quick video to let you know a little bit about my my new book, uh, which is coming out with Barrington Stoke in the January of 2024, which is entitled Northern Soul. Now, uh, it is a work of fiction, but it is in many ways uh, factional or representative of uh, of my teenage years. Uh, there are elements of this, I'm ashamed to say, that kind of happened uh, to me. Um, and my reason for writing it was until I was probably ooh, the age of 14, uh, I really just thought there was one thing that mattered in my life, which was which was footy and playing that at any given opportunity. And then I, I woke up uh, in the middle of class, basically, bang, one day um, when uh, a girl arrived at our school um, called Carly Stonehouse. And she was without doubt the single most beautiful human being I'd ever laid eyes on. And it was like uh, a choir, a fanfare, the world's greatest soul song playing in my head. And I suddenly realised that girls were the single most important thing on this planet. And it made me realise that I just wanted one of them, Carly, to start with. Just one, one girl. I wasn't greedy. Just one girl to notice me, to want to go out with us. And uh, the only problem was I was terrible at it i've had i've started i started relationships at the beginning of of period one for english literally as you walked into class and ask a girl out and she'd say yeah and then we'd leave english to find that i'd been dumped so you know it wasn't the best of starts and and i thought i started writing songs i, I joined a band at school because i thought it would get me a girlfriend i thought if i wrote songs these beautiful heartfelt sonnets about how amazing girls were i thought they would fall at my feet and queue up literally round the block uh, to go out with us and obviously this didn't come true. This didn't happen because the songs were terrible. They were dreadful. You could do better. Your your children, your grandchildren, babies in arms could write better songs than me. And I know that for a fact because they're in here. Because this is my notebook from when I was in the band Solid Air. Imagine that. And these, I'm going to hold these two close to the screen because I don't want you to be able to read them. These were my poems. These were my lyrics that I wrote in the hope that it would... Um, Get me a girlfriend. Imaginative titles such as "Without You," which incidentally uh, appears in the book itself. Uh, a heart in a square world. What a wonderful title that is. Uh, Gemini. Uh, oh my God, these are awful. Eternal effect. I mean, I don't know what uh, I was uh, thinking. Uh, and obviously, it didn't come true. It didn't happen because they were dreadful. But it did when Barrington Barrington got in touch a few a few months ago and said, "Listen, we've got a gap in our market for." For a teen book about a boy who's rubbish with the opposite sex, do you think you can write that book? And obviously, I said yes, uh, because I was that soldier. So the story is uh, so it's about Marv. Marv's a teen lad. Until now, football is the only thing that's mattered. Football and his best mate Jimmy, and then Carly arrives, and he needs help. She thinks he's invisible. She barely notices him. He can't speak. His tongue swells up. He can't say a word in front of her. And uh, and as a result, he asks for help. He, he, his dad, he's a he's a flawed individual, and he runs a record shop. And Marv hears his dad playing Otis Redding one night, and and as he goes to bed, he goes, "Oh my God! If only I had Otis Redding in my life uh, to mentor me, to help me get a girlfriend, life would be great." Goes to sleep, and Marv wakes up middle of the night to hear a crash at the end of his bed, and as he turns on the light there. At the end of his bed is a is a man who looks like Otis Redding and can sing like Otis Redding and he's dressed in a tuxedo like Otis Redding. Uh, the only difference is this Otis Redding has a Yorkshire accent and has a, a tomato ketchup stain down his front. And this Otis Redding, this northern soul, ends up becoming uh, Marv's kind of love genie, his 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 mentor in love, and things do not go to plan. So um, I want it to be a guide for young men and young women how to, not how to get a partner, but how not to. And uh, if it makes you laugh and cringe along the way, just think of me because a lot of the things actually happened to me. There's one story, a sanitised version of this story ends up in the book, and I thought I'd tell you it quickly. When I was when I was 19, I uh, I fell desperately for a girl called Sally at university, and I thought she was amazing. And uh, and I tried to woo her. And uh, one of the ways that I did that was I invited her to a party. And the idea was that I would pick her up in my white mini 
it was a mini advantage with a tennis net along the side. And my parents, when they bought me, my initials stenciled into the side. It was awful. But I thought, I'll drive her to this party. We'll have a great time. And then I'll drive her home at the end of the night and ask her out. And so it was all going to plan. I picked her up. We drove to the party. We chatted. Four hours later, I drove her home in my car. Her and the bloke that she pulled now sat in the back seat. Uh, the humiliation was complete. So as I said, a sanitized version appears in there in the book. So yes, it's a cautionary tale. Um, don't make the mistakes I made, kids. Uh, but I hope you enjoy it. I love working with Barrington. They're brilliant. They've given it the most beautiful cover, which just to me looks like a movie, and I love it so much. So I really hope the boys and 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 young women might 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 get something out of it, and I hope you do too. Give it a read. Thanks. See you soon.